At the beginning of 2018, YouTube changed the requirements for monetization of a channel. The new requirements make it much harder to qualify. Now a channel must have at least 4,000 hours of view time in the past year and must have 1,000 subscribers. As you see, I'm more than three-fourths of the way to the 4,000 hours, but my subscriber count is barely over one-fourth of the requirement. I really need more of you viewers to become subscribers. If you are enjoying or learning from my videos, please subscribe to my channel. It's easy, and it doesn't cost you a cent. Thanks. Hello, I'm not Chuck. In this video, I will discuss specific gravity in lead-acid batteries, like the ones used in RVs and vans, used for camping or full-time living. I'll explain what specific gravity is and show exactly how to measure it. It's a very important topic for making the most of the money you spend on batteries. The first step in preparing to check the specific gravity on your battery will be to gain access to the top side of the battery. Either remove the battery box cover or take the battery out of wherever it happens to be stored because you will need about a foot of clearance above the battery in order to use the hydrometer. I like to check the voltage on my battery on each battery before I check the electrolyte in the cell. In this case I'm going to check it twice. I'm going to check it with a very small load on it, that being the carbon monoxide and propane detector that's running inside the travel trailer. 12.59 is the voltage there. Then I'll remove a 30 amp fuse from the supply line which will disconnect all load from the battery and I'll check the voltage again. Because the load is so small, I expect the voltage to be almost exactly the same. And as you will see in just a moment, it is 12.60 volts this time. Next step is to uh, find some safety goggles and some uh, rubber gloves in order to protect yourself from the um, electrolyte inside the battery. Using a screwdriver, or if your caps unscrew, take the caps off the first cells in the battery. I like to wipe that acid off the bottom of the cover. Get the handle out of the battery or anything else that will interfere with access to the cells. Move that out of the way, and then we'll be ready to start. I've always wanted to understand the how and why of things. If you feel the same way, you can pause the video here and read some pertinent facts about the specific gravity of the electrolyte in lead-acid batteries. Otherwise, just let the video continue. This table shows the percentage of charge left in a Trojan 30 XHS battery based on three different measurements. The specific gravity of the electrolyte, the voltage of a single cell, and the voltage of the entire battery. When this lead-acid battery is charged, the specific gravity of the electrolyte increases to a maximum of approximately 1.277. As the battery is discharged, that is used, the specific gravity of the electrolyte decreases at a predictable rate and approaches 1, the specific gravity of pure water. For example, the 30XHS battery is considered 90% charged when the electrolyte specific gravity is 1.258. As you can see, that also indicates an individual cell charge of 2.103 volts and a total battery charge of 12.62 volts. But I'm no chemist, you might say. How can I measure the specific gravity of the electrolyte? Fortunately, there's a very inexpensive tool that you can use. It's called a hydrometer. Hydrometers, with a D, are used to measure the specific gravity of liquids, while hygrometers, with a G, are used to measure humidity. Some hydrometers are used to measure the alcohol content of beer or wine, but this one is used to measure the specific gravity of the electrolyte in a lead-acid battery. There are many other models available, but this is the one that I use in this video. 
As you see, there are four main parts to the hydrometer. In operation, the rubber nozzle is inserted into the electrolyte and the rubber bulb is used to draw the liquid into the glass tube. The glass float rises as the electrolyte is drawn into the tube and the distance that its top floats above the electrolyte shows the specific gravity of the electrolyte on the red, white, and green gauge inside the glass float. Here's an enlarged photo of the float. It's a sealed glass capsule with weight at the bottom for calibration and a paper gauge near the top for reading the specific gravity based on where the top of the electrolyte comes on the float. This is an enlargement of the paper gauge inside the float. The red section indicates that the battery needs recharging. The center white section indicates that the battery is in fair condition but could benefit from recharging. And the green and lower white sections show the specific gravity readings for a satisfactorily charged battery. Note that the decimal points shown here are not actually on the paper label. I added them to the drawing for consistency with real specific gravity readings. I also added numerical labels to the minor divisions in order to be sure that I understood the division values and to help you understand them. As you see, each minor division changes from the one above and below it by a value of .005 or five thousandths, which is the maximum resolution of this particular hydrometer. Here's an enlargement of the bottom half of the paper gauge. It is included here to ensure that the numbers are clearly legible to all viewers. All three of the cells I checked in the video show a specific gravity of 1.280 as indicated by the red arrow. To be clear, there's no red arrow on the hydrometer gauge. It is only on the drawing shown here. Using the hydrometer is really quite easy. Uh, put the rubber nozzle down into the first cell. Squeeze the bulb, which will put some air down into the cell. And then slowly release the bulb, which will draw the electrolyte up into the glass tube. And once there's enough electrolyte to float the float inside the tube. You should look at where the top of the electrolyte comes on the gauge and make a note of what that reading is. In this case, even though you can't see it very well on the screen, it was 1.280. Then be sure to return that electrolyte to the cell that it came from. Squeeze it all out. Make sure that the hydrometer is as empty as practical and move on to cell number two. It'll be the same process. Insert the nozzle, squeeze the bulb, slowly release the bulb, draw the electrolyte up into the glass tube, which will float the uh, float inside the tube. Read the level of the electrolyte by checking it against the gauge. Once again, it's 1.280. Squeeze that electrolyte back into the cell that it came from. Make sure that the hydrometer is completely empty and get ready to do cell number three. The process will be exactly the same, no change whatsoever, and you'll continue to do that until you've tested every cell and every battery. I'm not going to show all of that, and in fact, uh, when I was doing this from the, for the video, I didn't actually check every cell in both batteries. You'll need to uh, check every cell and make a note of every specific gravity reading uh, in every cell, keeping a record of which readings went with which cells. It'll become obvious why that's important a little bit later. And that's it for this video. In the next one, I'll show you how I keep records of the performance of my travel trailer batteries and explain why I think it's really important. In the meanwhile... Comment, like, share, and most importantly, please subscribe. And don't forget, I'm not Chuck.